afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming in this very challenging hour of the day to the event. Uh, among us professional speakers, this uh, slot is called the graveyard slot because it's after lunch and it's very challenging. A few weeks ago, I spoke in an event and a guy at the first row fell asleep. So I hinted to the guy sitting next to him, can you please wake him up? He looked at me with a straight face and said, you made him sleep, you wake him up. So uh, I hope that you will be able to sustain the, the rest of the talk. I need to see, ah, there, this is the time, okay. My talk is going to be on the topic of how to create mass usage. The name of the lecture, as you may have seen, is the first 100 million users are the most difficult ones. After 100 million users, it's going uh, simply fairly easy. And I would like to start with a short personal story. As some of you may know, one of my earliest investments was in the four Israeli kids, which created ICQ, excuse me, just a minute, because of my geometry, I have to pull my trousers all the time, otherwise it's going to be an embarrassing talk. And they created a product, co product called ICQ. Anybody here is uh, used to use in the past ICQ, raise your hand. So for mo most of you are very young people, I guess. And uh, they created the product, we put it on the web, and after a few weeks we began to notice something which was quite amazing at that time. We are now talking 1996. Total number of uh, users of the internet, maybe 30 or 40 million users. And uh, every day, 100,000 new users came and downloaded the program. And uh, we were sitting amazed on this phenomena. It's not anything that we forecasted. It's not anything that we thought will uh, happen. And then, of course, after a few months of watching this wonder, a thought went into my head. And the thought was that I have only to understand what is in ICQ that bring this kind of masses of usage. And then once I understand it, I will be able to replicate it. And I will be able every three, four months to create another program which will uh, generate 100,000 new users every day. Uh, I spent about three years trying to develop the globalized, generalized, unified theory of compelling user experience. And after three years of work, I had a wonderful slide presentation with 400 slides that to sum up what you see in the 400 slides is that I don't have the foggiest idea why it's happened. Then I formulized the law and the law was that the number of slides about a topic multiplied by your understanding of the topic is constant. The more slides, the less you understand the topic, or the less you understand the, the topic, you uh, have to put more slides. But I will share with you some of the things which I observed through this, uh, this journey. And most of the thing you know intuit intuitively, or you already read about it, uh, the quest is to how to generate great user experience. What, when you want to have mass usage, you have to generate in a certain area. It can be music, video, messages, social network, uh, anything you want. It, you have to generate a great user experience. 
So the task is uh, fairly easy, generating great user experience. The problem is that there is no manual how to generate a great user experience. There, there are manuals how to do engineering, there are manuals how to do technology things, but you cannot reduce a great user experience into an algorithm. You cannot develop an algorithm how to make a movie like uh, Spielberg or music like Mozart or architecture like Gaudi if you are in Barcelona. Once you are able to reduce it to algorithm, people can replicate it and the magic goes away. So, first observation is that in order to generate great user experience, you need somebody who really know how to resonate with the heart of the user. And the difference between a commodity product and a product which gives you an awesome, uh, awesome feeling that this is a great product may be in very few Details, as the old saying goes, that three hairs on your head is very little, but three hairs in the soup is a lot. Very small things can be very annoying and reduce the elegance and the fun of creating a great user experience. This week, everybody likes to speak about WhatsApp and the simplicity of WhatsApp is part of the great user experience. I will talk about some other things. And you have to work very hard in order to make something very simple. It's easy to create cluttered products with a lot of buttons and options and, uh, and personalization, etc., that nobody know how to use, and when he tries to register, he has to do it six times because it doesn't work and he's getting annoyed. To create an elegant, simple, aesthetic product is a work of art, not a work of technology. And this is the second thing that we have to know. Great user experience is art, is not a technology. In 19... In 1939, there was a guy by the name of Chargaff. He was a Viennese Jewish guy who escaped from the Nazis to United States. And he is the guy who found the three proteins which connect the double helix of the genome, of the DNA. He found the the proteins, but he didn't find the double helix. Few years later, not so few, but number of years later, Watson and Crick found the double helix and they got the Nobel Prize. Chagraf, who was very little away from it, didn't get the Nobel Prize, and then Watson and Crick wrote a book, and the book was called How Not the Double Helix. And Chargraf wrote a critic about the book. And he wrote the following sentence. He wrote, if Watson and Crick wouldn't have discovered the double helix, somebody else would have done it. But if Shakespeare wouldn't have written The Tempest, and Picasso wouldn't have painted the Mademoiselles of Avignon, Nobody else could have done it. And this is the difference between art and technology. Technology is rational, it's defined. As Kevin Kelly said, it is there until waiting that somebody will unsurface it, much like natural resource in the ground. Art is coming from the imagination, the talent, the intuition of the artist. And when you are looking for a great user experience, you always will find behind it an artist, which may or may not be also a technologist, but you, but you need a component of art. 
and it's very hard, if, in, if not impossible, to teach it. God come at night and touch the shoulder of some people and tell them, few people tell them, you will be great artists, you will be Picasso, you will be Mozart, or you will be a guy who create a great internet user experience. Uh, again, using WhatsApp as an example, on the desk of Jan Kuhn, there is a sign which was uh, shown all over the world, which says, no gimmicks, no advertising, no games on WhatsApp. And this is not a technology. This is an understanding of what annoying the user. So if you want to create a product which will be resonating with the heart of the user, you need to look for this very special talent. The problem, it's not trivial to identify the talent. Let me go to some other aspects. These very creative, talented individuals which are making great product guys are thriving as many creative people on recognition and on accomplishing their vision. They are not very much about the financial reward. So, sure, everybody would like to be rewarded financially, but the very talented guys, usually the creative guys, are part of the fuel which motivates them is the recognition. And you have to manage these talents much, that, much like you manage uh, Hollywood talents or music talents. You have to give them recognition. You have to give them the stage. You have to acknowledge what they are doing. Otherwise, they kind of will, will die or will be choking. So managing talent in a... A uh, high-tech environment is not a trivial thing uh, either, and we can have a whole uh, discussion about it. The next thing that I would like to discuss is the mantra which I call people, what, what are the killer apps? You know, I always asked, what are the killer apps? Is killer apps is video, or killer apps is mobile, or killer apps is messaging or killer apps is search. What are the killer apps? And I would like to suggest that people are the killer apps. At the end of the day, all of us are social animals. All of us are thriving on attending to other and being attended. This is what motivates people. This is what make people happy. Society, when they want to punish somebody, are isolating him from or her from other people. And this is the biggest, the biggest punishment. And we can see that anything which put you in touch with your friends will, uh, not anything, but the great, the great product, the great successful product, most of them have some kind of social thread. And in today, internet industry, if you would like to create a project which succeed, <coughs> which succeed, you must thread through it a social, a social thread. I mentioned uh, in the beginning of my talk ICQ, which was the first internet-wide instant messenger, and the reason why these 100,000 people came every day to download it, it's because it enabled them to get in touch with the people which were meaningful for them. This was a major tool, and this kind of uh, phenomena it was much before the internet and will stay with the internet as long as internet will 
succeed. Personal communication is the most important thing, and the most important thing in personal communication is that it's enabled people to be in touch with, uh, with each other. So if you look on the major successful products, you will see that most of them, definitely those who are uh, assemble mass usage of people are based on, on uh, personal communication and personal touch and personal attention. Sharing is very powerful motive. Uh, you look on, uh, on uh, Pinterest, you look on uh, YouTube, the major, one of the major driving forces is sharing with other people the, your passion. What you like, you share with your friends and you share with other people and this creates another thread of personal, personal relations with uh, others. A very important component is collaboration. Product which let people collaborate with each other will gain distribution. Uh, in 2003, an American researcher from Emory University in Georgia called George Burns made tests of, with uh, fMRI. fMRI is functional MRI, was at that time a new tool to measure how different behaviors of people affect the brain. And he measured the secretion of dopamine under different regimes of playing the prisoner dilemma. Prisoner dilemma, for those of you who are not familiar with game theory, is a classical a dilemma which you show to two people. They, uh, the two of them are thieves. They can collaborate and deny the crime and then the two of them will go free. Or one, or one of them deny, the other one not. The first one who deny will get, the first one, uh, or, the, or one of them can admit, the other one not. The first one which will admit will get a light punishment and the second will get a tough punishment. And the dilemma, of course, if none of them is admitting the crime, the two of them will go away. They are separated from each other and they are asked how they will, will uh, behave. This is called the, the the prisoner dilemma, and prisoner dilemma is a very elegant manifestation of collaboration against competition. He let 32 women play the prisoner dilemma in fMRI and watch what happened in their brain, and what he found that when they collaborated the secretion of dopamine was five times more than when they compete. Now, so dopamine is kind of the currency for enjoyment in the brain. When uh, you do th certain things, when you gamble, when you eat chocolate, when you earn a lot of money, when you do sex, you get secretion of uh, dopamine. And what uh, Burns showed is that we are wired for collaboration. If you can come with applications which enable people to collaborate, you will get, uh, you will get uh, traction. The next thing which I would like to discuss a little bit, I can, unfortunately, I can only touch the main the main theme is viral distribution. I'm sure all of you read, uh, or most of you read, the book of uh, Malcolm Goldwell about the tipping point. And you have a product 
you release a product, the product in the beginning will get a small traction, then if you are lucky, it will get more and more traction, and if you are very lucky, it will become an avalanche. Here is the time to draw the attention to the very unpleasant fact that, unfortunately, most of the product will not get 100 million users, most of the product will not get 10 million users, most of the product will not get 1 million users. Today, on the Android, in the Play Shop of uh, Google, you have over 1 million applications. I don't know what is the current number, maybe it's now 1.3, 1.5 million. Anybody knows the current number? And uh, only very small percentage gaining a big, a big distribution. The long tail is very long, and the decay from the beginning of the tail to the long tail is very long. I read somewhere that the average revenues of an application on its whole lifetime is $8,000, which is quite devastating. It means that most of the most of the people which create uh, products will never have the revenue to cover to cover the cost. Uh, probably it is more if you take uh, the the value of selling the product because uh, WhatsApp alone divided by one million users give you nineteen thousand dollars per application. But still, the, most of the applications are, are uh, far from gaining uh, traction. Many of them don't gain, gain any traction. But for those who are uh, having, the, have, having the traction, the parameters which I mentioned are found, some of them or all of them, in the, in the application. So you have the initial seed of distribution, the question now how you, how you gain more, more traffic. There are two ways, one is organic, which means by the user only, and one is enforced, that you go and do paid distribution. When you do paid distribution, you hope that the cost that the applications will yield to you is bigger than what you pay for the distribution. This is a model which has some problems with it. The better one, of course, is the organic one. For the organic one, the main distribution system is word of mouth. People are recommending to their friends. And what it takes for a product for that people will recommend it to their friends. Number one, the Holy Grail is that not that the product will be cool, but the product will make its user cool. If there is a product which make you cool, this is a winning proposition. Then a product for viral distribution should have what I call PQRS, and I would like to elaborate on PQRS. P stands for powerful. You have to come with a feature which is really giving a value, a basic, fundamental value, as I mentioned, connecting, sharing, main, main, main emotional value. This is P. The Q, it has to be quick. If you have to wrestle with the product, if you have to wrestle with understanding it, if you have to wrestle with studying it, if you have to wrestle with registering to it, forget about it. Nobody invests any time in studying anything. Either you go into it and you can get it operated in a few seconds or you leave it. R stands for reactive, should be interactive, but it was not according the letters, the letters of the, the PQRS. People want a product 
which will be interactive, which will react to what they are doing, which will uh, create a dialogue between them and the, and the machine, not passive product that you just go and look at it. And the S is simple. The simpler the product, the higher the viral marketing will be. You can, again, you can look on product like Pinterest or Instagram or Foursquare. All of them are amazingly simple products which uh, are very easy to use. The, thing, the, the next virtue which I would like to discuss is the emotional, the emotional component or the emotional level of the product. If you are able to leave the rational, the rational space of the user and penetrate to the emotional space, you are going to have a great product. If you look on YouTube and try to see what are the videos which gain the maximum number of viewers as a proxy to what motivate people, you will see that many of them has to do with the emotional level. All of you remember the video of the laughing baby. Uh, humor, 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 uh, humor is very strong emotional distribution tool, uh, giving you a th soothing feeling seeing animals. All of you remember the, the history of cat cat uh, videos, videos about cats, etc. So penetrating to the emotional level, if you can do it, can be very important. Sharing pictures of family, sharing pictures of relatives, sharing pictures of friends is a great, great uh, component of uh, this viral uh, distribution. So to try to sum up, how you create a great product. Number one, you can do all these things and never reach a great product. Number two, we have to remember that winner takes all. The internet is one market, and for every idea, there are hundreds and thousands of competitors. When we came with ICQ in 1996, in the next year, we counted 1,000 competitors. We stopped counting them, and nobody was able to shake the space. Yahoo and Microsoft invested hundreds of millions of dollars in it. Microsoft, at the end, was able to gain some space. But then came Skype, created a whole new set of features. And you know the story, they took the space and then Microsoft had to pay, I don't remember the number, I think $8 billion to Cisco in order to, to get it. So even if you do all the right things, the probability that you will hit it back is not uh, too promising. Uh, the MC mentioned that I invested in 85 companies. I was lucky to do 23 exits in the last 16 years, but I also closed 27 companies, or the, the founders closed, 27 companies I invested were closed. So there is no formula which can guarantee the succeed. The success, I think you can increase the probability of success, of success. Luck is very important. If you know how to get luck is uh, very good. Uh, but in order to get lucky, you have to work hard. As a friend of mine used to say, when Lady Luck knocks at your front door, you better don't be at, at the toilet at that time. You have to be in the, near, the, near your door, opening the door for the luck. I would like to pause here and to open the the floor for questions and answers and challenges 
and rejection. So if you guys can put a little bit of light so we can see. Ah, good. Now I see there are people here. That's very nice. I thought I'm talking to some dark hole. Okay, so so far as the 100 million users are always the, the most difficult. Any questions? A few, Yossi, but the few. first one, which is your luckiest exit? My luckiest exit is ICQ, as I mentioned. You know, after 19 months, I didn't plant the question. After 19 months, AOL came and bought the company which had $30,000 of revenue. And overnight, I became tall, thin, smart, blonde, blue eyes, dressed well, and I'm being invited to the most prestigious conferences like here in order to talk what I'm thinking about and what I told you basically in 30 minutes that I don't have the foggiest idea how you generate 100 million users. Not only that, but I have to tell you that because of this deal which made me famous, in 2010 I was awarded, which the MC didn't mention, by Yediot Achronot, which is the largest circulated newspaper in Israel, the title of the worst dress male in Israel for 2010. <laughs> And without, without ICQ, they wouldn't even know that I exist. You see, so it gave, brought me fame and glory. Okay. Um, a question here. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, just any... Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Shankar Mimbad. I am a founder of a company called Exaget. So we Fanta are a company called what? Exaget. We Exaget, do radio. What the company is doing? Radio advertising, targeted advertising for radio or audio apps. Which which uh, country? Where do you live? Finland and London. Aha, uh -huh, good. And the question? And the question is, uh, we are a B two B business. So in terms of driving that to the hundred million or four hundred million users, we are dependent upon, of course, our business customers to then drive the users. Any thoughts, advices there? Yeah, uh, B2B, B2C are two different worlds. B2B, you want to sell a product, you have to go to one guy, CIO, CTO, CFO, CMO, CEO, COO, and sell him the product. And then he go to his 30,000 employees, and tell them, you guys have to learn how to use the product in three weeks, so you have to go and find another job. You have to do one sale. When you are doing consumer-facing applications, when you are trying to give your product to the end user, you have to acquire one user at a time. If you get 100,000 users per day or 1 million users per day, you have to be able to pitch each one of them at a time. So it takes a totally different, different mentality, a totally different approach. One very good manifestation for this, uh, this difference is the difference between the products of Microsoft and Apple. Microsoft for many, many years was a utility productivity company. You know, they had an office, which is a great package of uh, functionalities, of, uh, which is, was at least uh, at the beginning of the company used by corporation. Steve Jobs tried to reach the final user. He was interested in the end user, so Steve, Steve Jobs' approach was more about style, design, giving user experience, wonderful user experience, piece of art, very simple. Microsoft went with brute, brute force. Steve Levy wrote a book called The, the Perfect Thing, where he wrote about the iPod. And he interviewed Steve Jobs, interviewed Bill Gates. 
And don't take me wrong, Bill Gates created one of the most amazing companies in the world, but Steve Gates or the company was, the DNA was engineering. And Steve Levy asks, uh, asks Bill Gates, why don't you have a cool product? He said, I don't have a cool product, I have a very cool product. He asked him, what is your cool product? He said, my cool product is word. Is the word processing? Is the word processing? This is also my Treo phone. Anybody is using Treo? So this is the difference between, between selling B2B and selling B2C. B2C, you have to get one user at a time. And in order to do it, you have to create something which will be so wonderful, so magnificent that people will use it and will say, ah, and the, and the proof of a great product is a product that you get your friend and you get him by the button and you tell him, look, I have to show you the new application I downloaded or I have to show you the new software I install on my computer. No question. Okay, guys, so what I would like to wish you is a good luck and go after this talk and generate your first 100 million users application. Thank you.